Go High Level is the number one software I use to take my marketing agency to the top. I run everything through there and I use it to get my clients amazing results. I'm gonna be showing you guys a replay of a live presentation I recently did for agency owners on how they can use it to make their agency more profitable and take their service delivery to the next level. I even reveal how I'm able to offer pay per show and truly go in depth into my service delivery and how I use it for my own agency as well. I go in depth into everything step by step. I don't hold back at all. So I hope you guys are able to extract as much value from this as possible. If anyone wants to get access to my templates and snapshots that you can just copy and paste into your own account, feel free to do so by signing up through my affiliate link, which will be in the description. If you do want to go this route and just copy and paste everything over, there are three ways you can do so. Option number one is to just sign up for a new account under my affiliate link, which will be in the description and message me so I can transfer everything over to you and send it your way. Option number two is if you've already signed up to go high level, but you're still in trial, you can still add me in as your affiliate and get access to everything by messaging support. But the easiest option is honestly just to make a new account. Option number three is that I can make you a sub account under my agency plan for 50% off and you get access to the templates and snapshots as well. So if anyone wants to go with any one of the three options, feel free to message me and I can help you get set up but let's dive right into the presentation. I'm gonna be going over the high level basics, how I use it for my agency in terms of, I use it as a CRM, taking payments from clients, sending text and email reminders. And then after that, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I offer pay per show to my dental clients. I'll be talking specifically about dental, but it can be applied to other local business niches like real estate, any local business that revolves around setting appointments. So I'll be sharing how I take deposits from people, how I track it. So the client knows what kind of clients we're getting them. And then at the end, I'll also be showing you guys how to save money with Go High Level. So there's actually a way you can get a 28 free trial through Go High Level. You can actually extend this longer. There's a way you guys can get 90% off for three months. There's also a way you can get 50% off for life. And then, yeah, we'll just finish off with a Q&A if you guys have any questions. The first thing we're going to do is go over high level versus click funnels. So in the course, Eman shares his click funnels templates. Now, if anyone uses go high level, you can easily go in here under funnels and websites, and you can actually import any one of Eman's templates that he shares in the course. So once you go on building your website, Call it whatever you want. Create website, add new page here, and then any of the ClickFunnels templates, you can easily just import the link here. And once you import the link, all the ClickFunnels templates will be transported onto your own website, and then you can just edit them from there. The next thing I'll be going over is how I take payments from people during my sales calls. So whenever I'm on a sales call with somebody, and they say yes, they agree, and it's time to take payment. I always use the high level dashboard to take my payment. And this is the fastest way to take payment from somebody. So you just want to click on send SMS here, request payment, and you can literally send them a payment link in 30 seconds. So let's say it's for my new patient accelerator program. This one's going to be $1,000. You select the due date, which you always want to select on the day you're taking the payment on. You want to click on the link doesn't expire and then save it. And then you can easily just text it over to them. I'm not going to text it over to this example, but let's see if payment link pops up here. Cool. And this is how simple it looks. And this is going to be the fastest way you can take payments from your clients because all they have to do is just put in their card information and that's it. They don't even have to fill out their name. They don't have to fill out that kind of information. All they have to do 
is just fill out the card information and then you can take the payment right away. And I used to take my payments through Stripe, but even when you take a payment through Stripe or if I'm on a live sales call with somebody and I want to take payment from them right away, with Stripe, you have to get the invoice ready. You have to add them in as a customer. You have to do all this information. And then only after that, you can send it over. And even after that, it'll take like a minute and a half. You have to go on manually and send it over. Kevin asked, can it be set to recur? So the first time, it's going to be as an invoice, like the link I sent right here. But after they pay the invoice, you can actually go into Stripe and create the subscription for them. And they don't even have to know about this because once you have their payment information on file, then you can just create the subscription for them after that. So when I just sign clients, I'll get them to pay the first invoice through here. And then after that, I'll just go into Stripe and then I will set up the recurring payments after that. So any questions from anyone? Type it in the chat, how the email automation works. So for email automation, I don't use Go High Level for email automation. The only email automation I use it for is just for my text and email reminders whenever someone sets a meeting. So you can actually integrate Zoom with Go High Level and you can actually build your own calendar. So it replaces Calendly in that aspect, but I have it set up under automations here where as soon as someone clicks my calendar link and they sign up to join one of my meetings, then I just have it set up where they get text and email notification one hour before their appointment and one day before their appointment. So these reminders, they also have the Zoom link in them. So it's pretty easy for them to join. All I just say is, Reminder, this is what time your appointment or start time is. And then just please join from the Zoom link that was emailed to them. So I emailed them the Zoom link and then I just get them to join from there when the time is ready for the appointment. Do you send the agreement through Go High Level or do you have them pay before or after signing the agreement? Okay, that's a good question. So I use PandaDoc to sign them the contract. And PandaDoc is actually a free software. It's not really talked about that much, but pretty much you can send your contracts through PandaDoc for free. They have a paid plan, but I'm still on the free plan. And you can actually, you have a lot of flexibility with it. It just depends on the client. My goal on the sales calls is to take the payment on the call. So I'll like try to send them the invoice right away and get them to pay. A lot of times people will ask if they can see the contract beforehand. So I do send them the contract beforehand. If they try to play some shit like, oh, you know, let me just have an in-depth look at this and I'll get back to you later. Then, you know, I'll just say, hey, we usually take the payment right now. We can actually just finish the contract and the onboarding and I can answer any questions you have or I'll actually get them to open up the contract in front of me and I'll go over the contract with them and explain everything they have questions on. And then, yeah, I'll get them to sign up for the contract right then and there. I've actually been introducing scarcity into my offer recently. So I give people a discount if they sign up on the first call. Right now, I'm testing it out. With that one, they kind of have to sign up on that day. So it really gets rid of the I think about a question or partner question, all that BS. The next thing is my CRM. All of the prospects that sign up a meeting with me, I have a CRM for all. Of them. So this one is a demo person I just set up here. And automatically, as soon as someone books on my calendar, they're automatically going to get added into the opportunity section here. So this person's name is Demo. I have it set up so when they set the meeting to when they show up, if there's a second meeting, if I've sent them the contract and invoice. And then what I do is I'll start off by pitching a monthly retainer fee. If someone doesn't accept the monthly retainer fee, after that, then I will reach out to them in a couple of months with the future paper show offer. And then I'll offer them paper show. My preferred offer is to get them to sign in on under a monthly recurring retainer. But if not, I still want to sign the client. So I'll just offer them paper show and I'll still take them on that one. And then this is the CRM I use to kind of manage all my meetings, people I need to follow up with, people that didn't know show or anything like that. I'll go over the dashboard and everything with you guys quickly as well, just so I can explain that how that whole aspect works. Okay, so the dashboard is pretty much your 
your data, your stats, etc. So pretty much it has the value of what your prospects are all worth. As an agency, you don't really need the dashboard that much. It's just good to look at if you need to, but it's just more for your prospects because if you have a performance-based offer or you have like a return on investment-based offer where you're actually bringing the business revenue, it's good to have this dashboard here for them to see how much revenue you're bringing them, how much the opportunity is, how much they close, et cetera. What even the conversion rate is on the leads. Do you have a nurture sequence for your leads? So for my clients, I'll be showing you guys my nurture sequence for them. For myself personally, I don't, I only use it for people that actually set up a meeting with me. So I use like a spreadsheet for leads that I'm reaching out to, et cetera, and cold calling. But for people that set up a meeting with me, I just have the basic confirmation email. And then I'll have like a little proof email after where I send them some more information about my company and things like that, which I can actually share. It depends if it's the first meeting or the second meeting, but when I sign up someone for the first meeting, I just have a self notification that goes out to me. I have a confirmation email that automatically goes out to the prospect. And then, yeah, just during the confirmation email, I just has the Zoom link automatically sent out to them. And then, yeah, all they have to do is just join in from the Zoom link. This is where I add them into my CRM. And then what I actually do is I wait three minutes. After I wait three minutes, well, it's not me waiting, the automation is doing it. I just send them a personal email after that. And the personal email is just me saying, hey, I'm excited for our meeting. Feel free to check us out at our website if you want to do anything before the meeting, if you want to do some more research on us. And then after that, it's just pretty much the text and email reminders. Um, See here, okay, you don't create email automation for your clients when you collect leads within the website on Go High Level. So this is the automation I have for myself. And then for my clients, I have a separate automation, which I'll be showing you guys later on. Can you show your nurture sequence for your clients leads? Yes, I will be doing that. Conversations tab, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is where you just have text and email conversations with your clients. So if a client wants to text you on something, or something along those lines. This is where you have all those. So I just use this to text my clients if they need to reschedule or anything, or if they reply to the email for the meeting. And then calendars, this is where you just set up all your calendars. And then you just record all your meetings. Contacts, pretty self-explanatory. You just have all your contacts on there. Showed you guys opportunities. Payments, this is where you actually just integrate your Stripe account. And then, yeah, you can just send all your invoices through here. You can create all your subscriptions through here. I don't usually actually use this. I just do it directly through Stripe. There's not really a need to use it, but this is something, a possibility for you guys, if anybody wants to do. Cold SMS is illegal in many places. I have no idea. I don't really do cold SMS, but I actually know someone that does do cold SMS and they're actually booking meetings with it. So I'm not too sure if it's illegal or not, but it's a good outreach strategy. Okay, so marketing. If anyone is doing social media posting for your clients, you can actually just do it through here. So you can post on Facebook, Instagram, GMB, LinkedIn, and Twitter all at once from one place. And you can actually schedule your posts. So I don't really offer this service. I only offer for one client. And this is what we're doing for them. Emails. So if anybody is doing emails, I personally don't do email outreach myself. But if anybody is, this is where you set up all your emails and you can do your email campaigns through here. Personally, again, I don't use the email aspect of Go High Level, but if anybody does, this is where you do it. You can set up your templates here and yeah, just send out everything through here. Under templates, I just have some basic things for when someone cancels or things like that. But beyond that, I don't really use this aspect of high level. Automation, this is where most of the stuff happens in terms of some of schedules. I also have some basic automations that go out. And then, yeah, beyond that, that should be everything I use it for my agency. If anyone has any questions about using it for an agency yourself before I show you how to do paper show, feel free to ask me. Okay, Joshua Wong, what form of outreach do you use? So I just do cold calling. It's how I set all my meetings. I just set up all the meetings to high level. I'm also in the dental niche, so it's a great niche to do cold calling in. Is the social planner feature good enough to replace Ladder or Sprout Central? I'm not sure. I never use those. I'm only doing the social planner for only one client. So not sure if it 
competes with those. What was the tool you mentioned for cold calling? Okay, so for cold calling, I just use Twilio. So you can actually buy phone numbers directly through high level. Let's go into my settings here and go into phone numbers. So I have around 54 different numbers I use for cold calling. So when I'm cold calling and I'm calling different area codes, I like to cold call from the area code that I'm reaching out to because I'm trying to get past the gatekeeper. Or even if I'm cold calling someone just on cold, if someone sees that I'm calling from an area code they don't recognize, they might think it's them. But if it's from the same area code, I think that increases my chances of them picking up because it shows that they may not be spam. It might actually be someone they know. Or if I'm cold calling and I'm leaving a message from somebody, then, so for example, for dental, when I cold call the gatekeepers, I usually leave a message for the owner and then the owner calls me back. So I like to have the same area code. So anyways, through high level, you can just buy as many phone numbers as you want. The numbers are paid for, by the way. So the numbers cost, I'm in Canada, in Canada, in the US, they cost around a dollar per phone number a month. So it's not that much and it's worth it for signing the clients. Okay, let's see here. Okay, what is Paper Show? Paper Show is, is just a business model used for your clients. So typically people just sign people on flat monthly retainer fees, and which is a good model, but a lot of clients will want a performance-based model. So for local business, you can offer them a Paper Show where they pay you per patient that actually shows up to their clinic per appointment that you actually schedule them. So it's a great model and clients love it. My closing rate with it is like above 50%. I think it's around 60% with it. So clients love it because it's really no risk for them. All they're paying, they're only paying you for performance. How hard is it to learn all the aspects of and how to use them? It looks like it does a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's a pretty comprehensive software and it takes a long time to learn. I've been using it for like a year and a half and there's still certain features I'm still optimizing to get better results with it. Okay, so let's talk about paper show. How Paper Show works is that you can integrate your Facebook and Instagram ads through Go High Level. They just came out with a TikTok integration as well. So let's go into integrations here. This is for one of my clients. You can integrate your Google account here. So if anyone does Google ads, you can integrate it. So whenever someone fills out a lead form on Google, they automatically get added into Go High Level. You can integrate Facebook and Instagram. And you can also integrate TikTok as well, which is actually just added on here. TikTok as an integration, it's just on beta right now. So you can in integrate TikTok as well. So if you're doing lead ads, you can integrate with your lead forms, all of the leads and have them get transferred into Go High Level as soon as they sign up. So this is the pipeline I've set up for this client. This is the thing you have to remember. If you are gonna offer paper show, you must be calling the leads yourself or you must have an ISA or someone to call the leads for you. If you try to do paper show with the client, you know, calling the leads and them adding everything in themselves, it's going to be pretty difficult to do because I find the dental needs specifically, a lot of the times the gatekeepers, they're going to get lazy. They're not going to add information in. They're stupid sometimes. They'll make stupid mistakes and then you just won't get compensated for it. So if you are going to do paper show, you want to be in full control of the situation and you want to be on the leads yourselves. That's the best way you're going to be tracking all of the appointments you're going to be getting. So this is the pipeline I have set up for paper show. All of the new leads that come in, they're all going to show up under new here. So they show up under new. We call them up to three times. I'll do four times sometimes, but usually we call them up to three times. And we have their name here, their email, and their phone number. We'll call them up to three times, and we'll try to get them to schedule and then all the people that don't pick up, we'll just move to here. People not interested, we'll move to here. But the people that are interested and they want to set their appointment, there's a few different processes you can do with this, but this is the process we have set up. Let's say I'm talking to a patient, his name is John. He's ready to schedule his dental appointment. We say, hey, John, thank you. Uh, we're just gonna put you on a quick hold here. I'm gonna transfer you over to our scheduling coordinator and then they're just gonna finish up the rest of your appointment details. So you put John on hold, you transfer them over to the dental clinic, you call the dental clinic, you say, hey, I have a patient here, his name is John, I'm gonna transfer you over to him now. On your phone, you just put the transfer button and easily just transfer them over. Once you do that, 
all the receptionist has to do is just put in what time he wants to come in. And then, yeah, just put in what time he wants to come in on your calendar. And that's how you're going to track all the appointments. So what I get the front desk to do as soon as they schedule somebody in is I go get them to go into calendars here and I get them to add them in as an appointment and click this book appointment button here. So they click this book appointment button here, they add them in, and then this is how we're going to be tracking of uh, the patients we are bringing the dental practice. Okay, do you use a Facebook lead form and integrate that into your CRM at high level? If so, how? Okay, so AL. Yeah, so I showed you the integration already. You just have to go into settings, integration, and then you can integrate the Facebook lead form, Google lead form, TikTok lead form, whatever lead form you have. If you also want to do a landing page for your lead forms as well, you can build out your landing page to high level and then just have that set up so it integrates directly. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to do once you get the hang of it. Can you receive calls from clients on these numbers or is it just one way? Sam, I'm not too sure what exactly you mean by that. Can you receive calls? I will say that I do buy the client's separate phone number, which we send out text messages through. Answer a couple more questions. And I'll show you guys the rest of it. Okay. In paper show, they still pay for the marketing budget. Yes. They always pay for ad spend. The client always pays for ad spend. You never pay for ad spend. Mike asks, what access do you give to the client when creating a user for them? I gave them pretty basic access, man. I gave them access to, let me see here. I think I can actually show you guys here. Let me sign in as a client. Okay. So you can actually log in as a client to see what the client sees when they log into the dashboard. Yeah, but in terms of what access I give up, it's pretty basic access, man. Just like conversations, conversations, opportunities, and calendars. That's all they need. Okay. How do you make sure your ISA teams is good when it comes to objection handling? I'm in medical niche as well. Usually doctors are very skeptical with an ISA handling the appointments. Mom and Sharif. Okay. That's actually a very good question. And the dental clinics are actually a lot of times very skeptical. Okay, so let me explain this. Okay, so this is what all the client sees. So they all they only see conversations, calendars, contacts, and opportunities. You can actually just take out conversations. I take it out now for my new clients, but yeah, you can actually take out conversations. It's not necessary. Just add the basics for the front desk to see. Okay, how do you make your you make sure your ISA is good? So my strategy for making sure the ISA is good is that I actually started calling the patients myself. So I was actually on the phone calling the patients myself at first and just learning the process myself. When you're doing your ISA, obviously you want to hire someone from like the Philippines, South Africa, South America, India, somewhere in like a low income country. So you can pay the ISA like $500 a month, $1,000 a month, which is super good for them. But to you, it's like nothing. And it's just, it's an easy expense that you can have. So that's my game plan long term. But yeah, I used to just call the patients myself and just set up the processes. So the process I have set up, which I showed you guys there, I actually built out a script I actually use myself for my clients. So I have a script I use for all the offers we're doing for them. So I just read off a script. And yeah, for hiring ISA, I just make them duplicate that script and just read off the script. Obviously, I have great tonality and things like that. But the best way to train your ISA is either to find one that already knows what they're doing, they already have really good sales experience and they've already worked at another agency in some kind of sales form before, or to just do it yourself at first, take the ego hit. It is an ego hit when I'm calling fucking patients and I schedule them in. Take the ego hit, learn how to do it, and then you can outsource them later on. All right, let's go down here to the rest of the questions. Can you set up an editor role for your GHL if you wanted to so that somebody come in and take over the marketing side of your agency, for example? Yes, Mohammed, you can. You can add in as many employees to your account as possible and give them all the different roles. So the dental assistant has access to high level so that they have to be themselves at high level. Yes. So whenever I sign on a client, I have a training session with their front desk. So I train the front, set, front desk on how to do this. For paper show, it's pretty easy. Like all the front desk has to do is go in here, click appointment, and then book people in. Like it's pretty easy. To book Once we book somebody in, all they have to do is just add in what time they book in. It's super easy to do. If you somehow have access, if they're in another niche, if you have somehow access to their calendar, you don't need the front desk at all. If you have access to their calendar, you don't need the front desk at all. You can just book everything yourself and it's literally no work from them at all. 
I'm going to answer some more questions, but before I do, I'm going to go over some other basic things. So how do you do the paper show in terms of making sure the odds are in your favor? So for my automations, I have it set up that there's only two possible options. And the two possible options are either showed or no show. So whenever someone comes in to high level and they get added in as an appointment, they automatically get added in as a show. So even for the example, this Ali guy, he's scheduled for August for October 27th, but he's already counted as a show to him. So all the new appointments, they automatically get added in as shows. So if the client wants to count it as a no-show, they have to go in and manually change it to a no-show. It's not like we book the appointment and it's confirmed and it's up for grabs. It could either be a no-show or a no-show. No, you want the odds to be in your favor and you want it so that as soon as uh, someone books an appointment, they automatically count a show. And this is, how I have it, this is how I have it set up in my automations here, which if you guys want to see my automations for this client, I'll be happy to share them. So I have it set up so whenever someone books an appointment, it automatically adds it as a showed appointment. So the client has to go in manually and change it to a no-show for that to count as a no-show. And even if they do that, a lot of people ask me all the time of like, hey, how do you know if the client is being honest or not? What if the client lies and say that somebody didn't show up when they actually did? What you can actually do is since the patient's information is here, you can actually go into the patient. If you notice that you're getting a lot of no-shows or something isn't right, you can actually go and give them a call and just be like, hey, you know, did you show up to your appointment? If it's a no-show, it doesn't really matter anyways. You can actually just call the patient and just ask him yourself. So that's how you get the odds to be in your favor. Because a lot of clients, they will get lazy with it. So if they are lazy with it, you still want that to be in your favor. Okay, I'm going to answer a couple more questions and I'll show you guys some more in-depth of this offer. How do you connect the front desk to your account? So the dental practice for me, they have their own calendar. They have their own practice management software, which they have access to. So essentially, once we're on the phone with the patient and they want to book a time, we transfer them over to the front desk and then they pick a specific time for the patient to come in and the front desk has to add them in. So the front desk, they have access to this and they can log into a high level account. And I tell them to keep it open as a tab throughout their whole day when they're working. So they can easily just add somebody in as soon as we book them in for an appointment. All right. Sam asks, would you be able to show your pricing for paper show? How much do you show them per pay appointments? Per okay. So when I first did the paper show offer, I did a $200 setup fee. And then I did $70 per show. And it was it is undercharging. Like <laughs> for a dental practice, $70 per show is a very, very low amount. It's a steal deal for them. Staying with like a $200 setup fee. Most people for paper show, they charge a lot more than that. I was just testing out the offer. This was a few months ago. So I made it a lot, lot low. I made it to make it like a no, make sure it's a no brainer for them. So yeah, greatly undercharging at that price point. Now I've increased the setup fee. I increased the paper show amount. So it's a lot higher now. But at the time, I just started out with a very low amount. All right, let's see, Mustafa. Is there a way to link the cold calls you do and then easily link it as an opportunity in high level or would you have to do it manually? I'm not too sure what you mean by that, Mustafa, but yeah, we call the patients ourselves when they sign up. So we get a notification. So I actually set it up before where I get a text notification whenever someone comes in. So automatically I know to call the patient back right away or the new lead. And I'll show you guys the automation for that right now, actually. So this is one we're doing like a free electric toothbrush offer. This is how the automation is set up. So Facebook lead form submitted. First thing here, whenever this is linked to your Facebook account, whenever a Facebook lead form is submitted, this is how it starts the automation. So the first thing I do is I create the opportunity. And for the opportunity, I just add them into my pipeline, Facebook leads. And then I just put a little note for them here. And I tag them as well with the first call. So I use tags, so I know how many times a patient is called already. So I have the first, second, and third call tags. And I use all of these tags for all the patients. So if I call a patient back once, they are going to be on the second call tag after that. Then after that, they're going to be on the third call tag. And then you can call them up as many times as you want. I have patients who are doing paper show that call patients back up to six times. I don't do that because I think, like, after six times, it's like, realistically, 
I don't want the number to get marked as spam, so I won't do it that many times. And then also add in the time they come in as well here. I'll do an internal text to myself. So I'll do a text to myself saying, hey, this person signed up for this offer. This is your phone number. This is their email. Or you can just send this to your ISA as well so then they can call the patient back right away. They get the notification when the new lead comes in. And when a new lead comes in, the goal is to call them back as fast as possible. That's the best time they're going to be ready to schedule their appointment. Okay. Now, from here in the automation, it goes into two different spots. So the first spot is if the dentistry is open or not. If the dentistry is open, and you can actually set in what times you want to be here. And I know it looks a lot of, it looks pretty confusing, but you'll figure it out once you get into the automations. So if the dentistry is open, I will just send out an automated text message to the patient, something like this. Hey, thank you for signing up. I just saw that you signed up for this offer. And then are you just scheduled your appointment or do you have any questions I can help you with? One day later, I'll send them text message number two, text message number three, which is just, hey, I know she signed up. I'm glad to answer any questions you have. I'll wait another two days and I'll send them text message number four saying, hey, we tried calling you a few times. You're an answer, so we wish you the best. And yeah, all these text messages, templates I'm showing you guys right now, they've all been tested and proven by me. I've edited them up a bunch of times already. This is like the end result right now of like all the best tests. And these are the text messages that get the most replies. Okay. So that's if they're already open. Now, if they're not open already, I have it set up so that every day they're not open, I have a different message that goes up. So for example, for this client, if they're not, if the dentistry isn't open, I just send them a text message say, hey, I noticed you signed up for whatever offer. Will you open Tuesday at 12 p.m.? So I'll make sure to give you a call then. And this is all automated. The patient gets this. They think they have a personalized text message, but in reality, it's an automation and it's set up in a way to make it look super authentic. I had a client, we set up the automation for them and the client thought that we were the ones actually texting the patients ourselves because it was so authentic. All right, so there's a couple more things, intricacies to the paper show you guys can set up in high level and I'll get to them. I'm gonna answer a couple of questions first and I'll show you guys some more things as well. Could you cold call through high level and input the contacts from CSV and call the app? Okay, yes, you can cold call through high level itself and you can import the contacts from CSV. So if you go to contacts here, you can go to, I think it's this one here, yeah, import contacts. And then it gives you a template to upload your file here. And then yeah, ready to be imported. So you wanna click here and then it shows the template you wanna use for importing your contacts. And yeah, I'm not gonna wait for it to load up, but yeah, it's pretty easy. And then you just map it out to what you wanna do from then on in. And yeah, you can cold call through high level. I don't like it because it's Wi-Fi calling. Let's go on dashboard here. So yeah, you can actually cold call through high level here. I don't do it myself. I have it set up through Twilio in a different way where I can cold call through my cell phone. It's I find it a lot better. But yeah, you can do it through high level. How do you auto do the auto text response when a lead calls your client and they're unable to pick up? I don't really do that, to be honest. If for paper show, obviously you want to have control of the leads and you want the leads to call you instead of your client. So I don't do the auto text response because like if they call us or anybody that's doing the calls for me, like we'll pick up. We're not going to miss the text message or we'll do it manually ourselves. Momin Sharif, I'm just going to call him Sharif, asks if the clinic is skeptical, which they usually are, apart from them being lazy, how do you make sure that someone showed up or not? Okay. so. You do that by automatically counting the patients that book an appointment as shows. So whenever someone adds an appointment, you want to make sure to add them in as shows automatically. So automatically they count as a show. So if the practice is lazy, it's actually to your advantage because if they are lazy and they don't go in and they don't put in the no shows, then you just build a client way more than what you actually do. If the client is dumb enough not to check themselves and things like that. But essentially when I'm billing the client, at the end of the month, I always like to do it like the last day of the month when I'm billing the client. I'll just go on, send them a loom, open up the appointments and say, hey, we got 10 shows this month. This is how much I'm going to be billing. And then, yeah, it's pretty transparent. The client sees loom. And then, yeah, we just go from there.
If you call them and they book an appointment, not interested, how does it automatically stop the flow? Okay. So how does it automatically stop the flow if they don't book an appointment or whatever? So I have it set up when they get moved to not interested, for example, it abandons the lead. So as you can see, the people who have are on no pickup or are not interested, they're all counted as abandoned here. So it's automatically going to get abandoned. So for example, this person here, there's no pickups that are abandoned and they're out of the workflow. So it's pretty good. Actually, I have, there's so much automations. I don't want to confuse you guys too much by sharing every single one. Okay. If a lead calls your go high level number back, does it ring? And can you pick it up at high level? Yes. You, if you have, there's two different options you can use. If you're like me and you want to set up to, your, to go to your phone number yourself, if you want it to for, forward to your own phone number or your ISA's phone number, then yeah, it just rings as a normal phone call. If you do the Wi-Fi option and use the actual high-level dialer itself, then they just want to make sure to have the high-level app downloaded on their phone and then be connected to Wi-Fi, and then it rings to them automatically. Okay, we're at a question, so which is good, which I can show the rest of the stuff. So another thing that I do for the paper show is that a lot of times you may get no-shows, and clients don't like no-shows, especially in the dental niche. Maybe like 50% of the people will no-show. It can be a lot more than that. For this client, we're just doing a free electric toothbrush offer. So I don't take a deposit from this client specifically. But for this other client here, we took deposits. So you can actually take deposits from patients for booking an appointment. So let's say that someone's ready to schedule their appointment and they want to come in for some kind of whatever dentures program. You can actually send SMS here and the same way you can take payment for, for your own agency on your sales calls with your clients, you can actually do the same for the paper show offer. So you can actually request payment from the patient. I just put a refundable deposit here. I take a $20 de deposit from them, invoice due date that day, link doesn't expire, send, send it over to the patient and only let them book in once they pay the deposit. If you choose this option, I find that we get like 85 percent plus show up rates with this because what we do is we tell the patient once they're ready to book since this is a free consultation and dr yan is going to be reserving her time for you our system requires a 20 dollars refundable deposit from all new patients to confirm their appointment as soon as you show up to your appointment it automatically refunds it back to you so you do get it back but it just requires it to make sure we respect the doctor's time would you like me to text you the payment link for that most of the time, the patient will agree. You text them the payment link, they pay it, and then that's when you live transfer them over after they pay the deposit. And then, yeah, once they pay the deposit, you go into your client's Stripe account, and you can just refund the people. Well, the front desk does it, but they just refund the people once they come in. Okay, and does anybody have any questions about taking the deposit? And this is actually a great strategy you want to do if you're in an industry that has high show, high no-show rates, because Look, clients are going to get pissed off, man. If you're bringing them all these patients and only 50% are showing up or something, they're going to get pissed off eventually. So yeah, they're going to get pissed off if the show up rates are too low. So what I like to do sometimes is I'll start off by not taking a deposit. And then if it's necessary later on and they're getting high no-show rates and they're on the verge of leaving, then I'll just get them to do the deposit thing. So it's very nice for them. So the last thing with the paper show offer and the beauty of it is that you can actually track the revenue you're bringing to the practice. So when a patient shows up, you can actually go in here and click their name. So for example, Ali here, you can go and click their name, add in how much they spent. So let's say he comes in for a checkup and cleaning, he spent $600, you just put in $600. You click one here, you change it to one, click update, and then it shows up in the dashboard here. So the client can see their return on investment you're getting from them. So for this clinic, so far, we've gone around almost 10K return on investment, which is actually pretty low because they don't input a lot of it. So this is an underestimate, but this is the return on investment we're getting from them. And you can actually track a lot of things like conversion rates as well. And the clients can see their return on investment. So I actually get their front desk to do it themselves. So for all these people like Mark here, he was worth three hundred. He paid $300 here. Cassie paid $600, $200, $500. So their front desk puts this in. Once they're updating whether they no-showed or showed, 
they also add in how much the patient spends. So I can go in in the reporting with the client and I can be like, hey, this is how much we spent on ads. This is how much we got to you back. And they'll do also have a nice reporting session as well. So you can actually go into the reporting session and go in like, hey, this is how much you spent on your ads and what the cost per click was, return on investment. You can see things like that. This return on investment is underestimated because, yeah, again, the front desk is pretty trash at putting in how much they actually spent. Can you link your email to high level, then send normal emails to potential leads? Mustafa, I don't know if you're asking for using it as an agency or using it for service delivery, but yeah, you can link your email. I have my email linked to high level. You just set it up as your SMTP. It's free. Then that's how you have email conversations. You can also link your client's email to it as well and send out emails on their behalf if you need to. I just send out text messages. I'll ask, yeah, the front desk has access to high level. Yes, they do have access to it. They don't need it for much. All they need to do is just add in the appointments and then add in how much they spent. It's pretty easy for the paper show. That's all they have to do. If you do a business model where the front desk calls the leads themselves, then you'll need to give them access to a lot more and things like that. But yeah, for the what they have access to, it's pretty just a calendar and yeah, calendar conversations and then opportunities and contacts. Just these first four up here. You can do dashboard if you want, but beyond that, they don't need much. Another tip I'll give you guys for a paper show is I record my training session with the front desk. So as you can see here, this says training ivory. So if the front desk clicks this, they'll take them to a replay of our training session. So I'll record their, the replay on Zoom. You can actually upload it to high level which is what I did for that client. So I uploaded the replay of the training in case the front desk forgot anything or they don't know how to do anything. They're complaining for whatever reason. They can always just go back and see the replay. Under sites and then memberships here, you can, you can have the replay right here. So I have it for them just in case they forget anything. Let's see what other questions we have here. Do you block out your day to ensure that you're available to call them all day or just a certain time period of the day? Good question, Joshua. That's a really good question. So look, whether you're doing the paper show yourself and you're calling the leads yourself or you have your ISA doing it, you want to set out actual appointment blocks where you're calling the leads. So with me, what I do is I'll call the leads when the dental practice first opens and for when they first close. Most people have the nine to five. They work during the day. So I'll try to call the lead. Like the, I'll try to get the maximum difference possible from the first and the second call. So I can reach them. If they're working in the morning, I'll reach them at night. If they're working at night, I'll reach them in the morning. So I'll do when the clinic opens and when the clinic closes. And then in between those times, any patient that comes in, signs up a queue or whatever, and I get the lead right away, that's when I'll call that lead specifically. But you want to have appointment blocks where you call the leads for the client because that's how you're going to make it super nice for yourself and make it very even automated for yourself so it doesn't take up a lot of your mental capacity thinking all the time, when should I call this person? When should I call them, et cetera. All right, okay. Another thing I do wanna say for the paper show is that some practices will have cloud-based practice management software. And I've only had one client so far that had a cloud-based practice management software, which pretty much means that it's online. So you do have access to the account. So if your client, make sure to ask them if they have a cloud-based calendar, whatever software they have, so if they do, it'll make things so much easier for you because you won't have to transfer it over to the patient. You can just add it in for them yourself and it'll save a lot of time. So a lot of practices will have that. And then, yeah, I haven't tried this other strategy out myself, but one of my friends is, who's also in the dental niche does this. He gets his clients to block off times in the calendar where they have open. So actually gets the client's front desk to go in before the day starts and add in what times they have open so you can just book the patients for them or at already time. So there's a lot of different intricacies you guys can do with this. How do you see how much you spent total in ads in GHL? Do you have to connect Facebook to GHL? Yeah, so you can just use the ads manager in Facebook. It's pretty self-explanatory, but yeah, you can just go under, under reporting here. You can check out the clicks, et cetera, and make it nice for your clients if they ever wanna check it out. For Facebook ads, Everything is in here. You can also see how much the lead spent, et cetera, how much the average revenue was. Let me go.
Okay, so this is what the reporting looks like. And you can actually see client spends. This is how much they spent in ad spend. This is a newer client of mine. This is how much they got back in revenue. Right now, maybe like a 2 extra return investment. This is what it says here. In reality, it's a lot higher than that. I try to go from like a 5 to 10 extra return investment. The front desk still sucks at putting in how much they spent. In the dental industry, sometimes people will come in for the checkup or cleaning. And then they'll get treatment at beyond that, like a dental implant and Invisalign. The front desk only puts in the checkup and cleaning. They don't put in the follow-up treatment and things like that. So still, it's still a two extra trial investment. But yeah, you can see it's your sales, your cost per sale. So how much it costs you in ad spend to get a showed appointment, how many leads came in, the cost per lead, impressions, et cetera. You can see your return on investment. You can actually change up the columns as well. It's pretty nice. They're, they have a pretty good reporting system. It's better than the Facebook guys manager. And actually what I do is actually the clients that have the best results, I'll actually go into my sales calls and I'll show them, hey, this client, we got them a three extra strong investment, five extra strong investment, et cetera. So in my sales calls, other clients can see. Auth, man, have you considered paying for the marketing your budget yourself and sell them shops with a higher markup? Nah, man, I haven't. It's pretty, there's not a need for it, man, realistically. Yeah, I don't really need to do that. You always want the client to pay for ad spend. And I don't, even when I'm doing my finances and stuff, I don't want my finances to get all complicated with us paying for ad spend. And then also if the client is paying for the ad spend themselves, it's like if they end up not paying you for whatever reason, you get a bad client, which happens every once in a while. It's like you're, you're pretty fun because now you are, are also spent all the time booking patients and you also spent $1,000 in ad spend. And then also the other thing is like your cost per appointment it can vary man it can vary from different industries different offers you're doing even for the dental industry like for a dental implant patient it varies completely different than a checkup or cleaning patient the cost per acquisition for that patient so you never want to do that if you want you can do it but like it'll be easier to close the client if you just do you say you're going to pay for their ad spend but i've never had a client ever that complains about paying for ad spend. They, are, they already know what's good. They've already had meetings with tons of marketing agencies. Most of them have never offered them a paper show before. Most of them have never set up a system as comprehensive like this. You'll be far beyond the market. If you don't know if they're cloud-based or not, you can ask your medical practitioners, your doctors or whatever, if it is or not, and they'll just tell you. There's also something you guys can do with TeamViewer, which I haven't done myself yet. It's just something that's been in the back of my mind where even if it's not cloud-based, you can still see their practice management software is just very complicated to do. Can you make the conversion area automated by using a bot to ask questions? Oh yeah, that's a good question, man. That's a good question. So Mustafa asked a good question in the conversations is using a bot to ask questions. Or I think you mean to answer questions. I do this all the time, actually. So for example, if someone asks, what's your address? I will text them automated. So let's see here. Okay, so for Tammy here. She asked what the address is, where you guys located. And I, this message here, it was sent automated. I didn't actually type this in myself. No one did. I'll show you guys how to set that up, actually. So let's go back to automations here. So I have an automation called automatic text replies. Here. So I can automate certain things that I know there's the same answer for every client. So for this client here, if someone asks, for example, address, and there's different ways of asking address. You can ask address in so many different ways. So like where you're located or if they ask city or if they ask address or any of those words, location. If they ask those words, I have this set of, this automation to go back out to them, which is, hey, our address is location address and location city. So it's automated. If someone says stop or you got the wrong number from a lead, I have it set up where the conversation is marked as red and I abandon the opportunity and the lead just gets deleted off. Another automation I have is if someone asks, who is this? What's this for? Any one of those variations of it, I say, hey, hey, I'm custom values receptionist. I put in the receptionist name here from Ivory Dental and I'm reaching out because I know it's just signed up for this offer. If someone asks what hours are you guys open? Hey, we're open custom values hours. When is my appointment? If someone has already scheduled their appointment, hey, we scheduled you for appointment start time. 
phone number. If someone asks what your, the phone number is, I just send them the phone number here. So when you're setting up your client, you want to set up all this information. here. So this is all the different possible scenarios I have the automatic messages go out for. But if I go to custom values here, there's a spot where you can add in the custom values of the client. So whenever I bring on a new client, I add in their custom values. So for example, add in their office hours. So for example, in the automations, when I send this out, it sends out their hours, what the offer is. This one, we're doing like a free lecture toothbrush offer, what their phone number is, what the lady, what the name is of the receptionist, and then yeah, how much they're worth to the practice. So you can add in all these custom values here. You can add in more. There's a lot more you guys can do. And then yeah, you can have those automated text messages that go out. All right, let's see here. Any more questions in the chat? I would ask the dentist, what is the LTV? And for all show ups, make it automatic to add the value as their LTV. This way they will have an idea of how much lifetime the return on investment and you won't have an issue with their assistant. That's not a bad idea, Othman. That's a good idea. Yeah, I, ha I haven't really done it yet. I pitch on based on front end return on investment, not really as much as the back end, but that, has, that actually is a good idea because it makes the value of your server so much more. And even in the reporting, you'll be getting like 300 extra return investments, crazy return investment numbers you can show off. So it's actually a really good idea. I should write that down somewhere. Okay, what if the lead shows up to the practice just to get the $20 back and they don't do the appointment? Do you refund them the 20 or do you refund them only when they do the job? Okay, so we tell the leads for the people that we take a deposit for that as long as they show up, or even if they cancel within 48 hours, they'll still get the money refunded back to them. It's just to get them to show up for the consultation. As long as they show up, they get the $20 refund back. It's not for if they go through with treatment. So yeah, they always get the $20 back. You don't really want to keep the $20 or anything like that. It's just for just to get them to have some skin in the game and to commit to their appointment. All right, Nadeem asks, how would you recommend I use paper show model in real estate? Okay, Nadeem, that's a good question, man. And I'm in the dental niche, but for real estate, I would say you would try live transfer over the lead. So real estate is a little bit different. I have some friends in real estate, so I, I do know about it a little bit. It's a little bit different because you want to make sure you're getting qualified leads and you probably have some questions you want to ask them on the phone to make sure they're a qualified lead. So if I were you, what I would do, Nadine, is I would either you yourself or your ISA ask the qualifying questions to the lead. And then once the lead is ready to book, you just transfer them over to the real estate agent. And I'm sure the real estate agent would be happy to take them off your hands. And then the real estate agent can go in and they can add them in as an appointment themselves. Or if you have access to the real estate agent's calendar, I'm not too sure how they work specifically. If they have an online calendar or a cloud-based calendar, you can actually book the appointment for them themselves. Talk to the real estate agent to see what kind of model they prefer realistically. Or once you have an understanding of the niche way more than me, then you'll know what they want automatically. But that's what I would do if I was in your situation. Florent asks, how do you connect your clients to GHL? Pretty much integrations. You connect their Facebook account, their Google, their TikTok, whatever, whatever you want to do. And then you should be good. Let's go back to the slideshow here. Okay, went over the basics for you guys. Paper show, deposits, making an account, reporting, patient catcher. Okay, man, I haven't even gone, gone over the patient catcher. Yet. Okay, so one thing you guys can do for your clients that gives you an extra edge is you can install a patient catcher on their website. It's essentially a lead magnet, and I have one on my own website. And you can do this to a go high level where it's a little chat bot here that pops up here, hey, I have a question, text this here, and then they just fill in their name, phone number, and email here. And you can set this up for your clients, and I have it set up for my clients as well. So we can actually get leads from the ads, and we can also get leads from their website as well. So we can actually get compensated for the website as well. And I pitch this to the client in terms of, yeah, whenever someone comes in on your website, you want them to convert. So. Yeah, pretty much if you're doing paper show, you can get compensated extra for just getting people off from their website. How to get a 28-day free trial on high level or even longer. So when you sign up to high level by default, it's automatically going to give you guys a 14-day free trial. If you go in here within seven days of your trial finishing and you click on to modify or cancel your subscription, click here. You'll see an option here where you can extend your trial. 
It doesn't show for me since I'm already a paid member, but you'll see an option here where you can request a trial extension and you'll get an extra 14 days. And I actually know someone, take this in. I know someone that reached out to go high level multiple times and got multiple trial extensions that they got three months free. Like they literally got a free three months through high level just by emailing the support and be like, hey, can you just give me an extra 14 days? And that, they did that over and over again. I'm not too sure if they, they still allow that, but that's a strategy you guys can do to extend your high level plan even further. Okay, now the next thing is how to get 90% off for three months. So this is something I actually did recently and you can actually go into high level and request financial support. So I've already done this. So I, the button isn't available for me, but you can go and request financial support and they'll give you 90% off for three months. And three months is plenty of time to sign your client, sign multiple clients, et cetera. And yeah, for the financial support, just tell them why you need financial support. You don't have clients, whatever, whatever the reasoning is. And yeah, everyone, I think pretty sure everyone gets approved for it. If you guys see my payment, like 297 for the last three months, I got high level for $29 a month instead of the 297, just because I went in and I requested financial support. Okay. Last thing is how to get 50% off for life. Okay. So how to get 50% off, off go to high level. If you're someone new and you're just using high level, I'm able to make you an account off my high level agency plan as a sub account where you can actually just go in and you can get 50% off. It's pretty much the same as having your own go high level account. You can do everything you want. It's just, just be aware if you go with this option that I can see what you're doing. I can see your leads, et cetera, which I, I won't do that dumb shit, but just know that I'll technically be the owner of the whole agency account. And then you'll just be adding as a sub account. I would only recommend this option if you're just kind of starting out with high level, you're low on funds, you don't want to pay the full $97 a month for your own account. I can just make an account for you for 50% off. I just know that it's a short-term solution. So essentially, once you want to sign your own clients, et cetera, you want to have your own plan and you want to pay for your own stuff with your client's retainer fee. But yeah, in the short term, if you guys still want to sign up to high level and get 50% off, hit me up on Facebook and I'll make you an account for 50% off. Let's see here. In the 297, are you able to white label and put your brand on high level or is that the 497 package? I'm not too sure, Mustafa. I think that... Well, you're able to make as many accounts as you want and you can put in like your agency logo. Yeah, you can do a lot with it. I'm just not too sure if you're able to white label it fully with it. Right now, I don't have a need to upgrade to the 497 plan. So how you can get my templates and automations. If anybody signs up through my affiliate link or if you've already signed up through my affiliate link, if you hit me up, I'll share my snapshots with you. So I created two snapshots. The first snapshot I created is for... The marketing agency snapshot, where I share my appointment reminder templates, everything you guys can just copy and paste into your own agency account. And I shared my paper show template. So again, it's the same thing. You guys can just copy and paste it and just customize it to your client. So if you sign up through my affiliate link, which I'll put in somewhere here, I will just share my templates with you. And then, yeah, you can just get access to all my stuff. If you've already signed up to high level and you're already paying, it's not really a big deal if you don't get my templates. You can build them out yourself. I showed you guys the formula. All you have to do is just apply it. If anyone signs up to my affiliate link though, I'll just send them over to you. I'll show you how to copy and paste them into your own account. And then you'll be really good for when you sign your client. If you've already signed up to high level and you're in the trial, they have a policy where you can still add me in as your affiliate link as long as you're still in the trial and you haven't paid yet, you can still sign up under my affiliate and get all my templates. There's a message you have to send them. So let me know in Facebook and I'll show you the message you have to send them. They'll get you added under my affiliate. And then after that, I can share all my information. Okay, I think that should be everything for this presentation. Does anyone have any other questions before we sign off here? Oh man, you killed it, so. I know it's on this for days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be taking notes on this for days, so please. Okay, please sounds good. I hope you guys enjoyed that presentation. If there's anything else you guys want me to cover or go in depth into, feel free to let me know and I may make a separate video on it. But until then, I will see you guys next time.